So assume you're doing um, quantitation using titration. And titration, you know, is typically a classical method of analysis. One example of a classical method of analysis. I think as you well know, with a titration, you know, the setup, you know, typically looks like this. You've got your Ellen Mayer flask. In most cases, you know, with the unknown analyte. So that's what you're trying to determine. And then you've got a titrant. And the titrant normally is a standard solution. And the standard solution should have a known concentration. So this one you know, and this one you do not know. And based on the reaction, you know, between the titrant and the analyte, and hopefully the reaction is very, very fast, you know, such that after you add a drop of the titrant, it reacts completely, you know, with the analyte to form a product. And hopefully you've got an indicator, you know, that shows you at what point you've consumed all the analyte, you know, by addition, you know, of the titrant. That's typically how you do the titration. And of course, you guys have done that in your first year uh, chemistry. Now, in, in some cases, you would need to standardize, you know, the titrant, okay, using a primary standard. I'll, I'll give you an example. Anytime you're doing an acid-base titration, in most cases, you know, the sodium hydroxide is a, a titrant and it should be of known concentration. However, when you buy sodium hydroxide from the manufacturer, now the uh, concentration is not very clearly known because sodium hydroxide, you, you know, tends to absorb, you know, water from the atmosphere and so forth. You know, and so its concentration, you know, is not very, very clear. It's not very, very exact. You can approximate it, you know, but it's not very, very exact. And yet, of course, in analytical chemistry, you want your titrant to be completely exact. So in most cases, we are forced to standardize, you know, the sodium hydroxide so that it is of known concentration. And so how do you standardize sodium hydroxide? The conventional way is by reacting it with an acid of known concentration, you know, such as potassium hydrogen phthalate. Now, potassium hydrogen phthalate is what you would call a primary standard, meaning I can actually make it, you know, very, very accurately, and I can obtain it from the manufacturer in very high purity. And also I can weigh it, you know, very accurately, you know, because also its molar mass, you know, is quite high. So just check in the literature, possibly at least three attributes of a primary standard, okay? But a good example of a primary standard is potassium hydrogen phthalate. So the potassium hydrogen phthalate is prepared, you know, and it's put, you know, in this Ellen Mayer flask. Again, it's of known concentration. So in this case, I have weighed say 0 0.1302 and uh, the uncertainty of that measurement is listed here and the molar mass of course is fairly well known you know it's uh, it's very well known it's, it's a constant you know from the periodic table the 204.223 grams per mole now take note of this you know when you're doing a titration this one is a neutralization reaction i've got an acid i've got a base and the product is going to be water. In almost all cases, the K, the equilibrium constant, needs to be very, very large. And when it's very, very large, that means, you know, the reaction, you know, goes to completion right away, which is very important when you're doing a titration. Now, it's very important, again, to remember the reaction in titrations you have to balance it so the stoichiometry must be fairly well known and so in this case you can see one mole of my acid reacts with one mole you know of the base you know to make one mole of water okay and so i've got um the weight of the khp 
and I've got, you know, the I've got uh, the molar mass, meaning I can calculate, you know, the number of moles here. Now, in my burette, I've got um, I've got the sodium hydroxide of approximate concentration, maybe 0.2 molar, approximate concentration. But I really want to clarify and know the exact concentration. And so I would dispense it, you know, into my titrant, you know, that is known. And uh, the sodium hydroxide reacts with all the titrant, you know, to convert it, you know, into water. And of course, I can determine uh, the end point, the point at which, you know, all my KHP has reacted, you know, with the sodium hydroxide. So take note of this, it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry. So the number of moles of KHP would be equal to the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that needs to be dispensed, you know, to react with that. And from the burette readings, the amount that was dispensed, you know, is right here. Initially, I started v the initial, the volume initial is 0 0.05, and the error, you know, related to reading that scale is 0 0.02. And then I dispensed it up to 25.56. And typical errors with class A burettes, you know, are 0 0.02. And so I can, of course, subtract and know how much of the sodium hydroxide, you know, I dispensed. So when I'm doing my calculation here, the number of moles of KHP, I know the mass and it's uncertainty, I know the molar mass, I can do the division. And take note of the operation here, you know, I divide my grams, but I also divide, you know, the grams of the uncertainty, you know, with the molar mass. Then, and there's no uncertainty, of course, in the molar mass, okay? And so my final answer, as you can see, is, and confirm this, you know, so that's the number of moles, and that is the uncertainty, in the number of moles. So take note of this, the uncertainty divided also, you know, by that operation here, okay? Now, the same number of moles of KHP, it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry, so that is gonna be equals to the same number of moles, you know, of sodium hydroxide, you know, that uh, were consumed, okay? So what's the concentration then? I know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, you know, and I can divide it by the volume to know the exact concentration. But remember now the volume, you know, I had the V initial and I had the V final, the volume final. But now I have to get the, um, the uncertainty due to that operation. Now, because I am doing an addition here, okay, the uncertainty, you know, needs to be uh, put in the error propagation equation. And like I said before, the E needs to be absolute because I'm doing a subtraction here. Okay, and so that's going to be the absolute uncertainty. I put it into the error propagation equation, you know, to get um, the, uh, the, the error, you know, due to um, the, the d d d due to the the, 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 the titration here and, and so that's going to be 0 0.028 now because I'm doing division here you, you know to get uh, the concentration of sodium hydroxide I know my error that's the absolute uncertainty for the number of moles I now know the absolute uncertainty you know for my volume that was transferred but you can see that this one now is a division and so when I'm putting those numbers into the error propagation equation, they need to be a re relative standard deviation, relative standard deviation, okay? So, so I have to convert, you know, um, my, my relative standard um, de deviation or uncertainty in the millimoles of sodium hydroxide just by dividing it, you know, with the measured value. And I do the same with the volume. I put it into the error propagation equation. And now my uh, error, you know, in concentration, for the concentration of sodium hydroxide, you know, is gonna be 0 0.019. But remember again, this is relative uncertainty, okay? 
in the end of course i'm looking for the absolute uncertainty you know for it to have the same units you know as my measured value how do i get absolute uncertainty i'll get the absolute and the, the the relative uncertainty and i multiply it by the measurement value you know which is 0 0.0 2499 you know which was obtained you know from dividing this and this and I multiply it you know by, by, by that number so that I can have the answer now in molar concentration you know so I hope it's fairly clear so if I told the operation if I told the operation is subtraction you put the absolute um, uncertainties in the error propagation equation if the operation is division you put uh, the relative uncertainties in the error propagation equation at the very end you need to convert the relative uncertainty into the absolute uncertainty just by multiplying it with the measured value so that you can have the same units you know as your measured value which is what you have there remember again the command the first and certain value should be your last significant figure maybe let me give you another problem um, again a titration based on what you call a gentle metric titration a gentle metric titration a gentle metric titration refers you know to when silver is actually involved in a titration reaction okay now there are three types of agentimetric titrations you know there's what they call the moles the phagens and the volherds are uh, agentimetric titration with the mole you know agentimetric titration typically they use chromate as the indicator with the phagens the only difference is you know you use uh, dichlorofluorescein you know as the indicator it's an adsorption indicator and then with the volherds you know it's an indirect titration you know where you use the thiocyanate as um, the indicator so just take note of those differences but here is the problem calculate the uncertainty of the number of millimoles of chloride you know that's what you are determining chloride is the unknown the titrant it's silver and silver is a primary standard you can get silver nitrate you know in very very high purity from the manufacturer and of course you know prepare a standard solution you know from it i made the standard solution and I put it, you know, in my burette, and then now I titrate, you know, my unknown chloride. After the titration, uh, I got this as a tighter volumes, you know, I got that is six point seven eight, and so on, you know, of my titrant, you know, being dispensed in those three trials. Okay, the molar concentration, you know, of my titrant, of course, is known and it's given there and you've got uh, the absolute uncertainty so how do you calculate the uncertainty you know of the chloride the first thing you do of course is to rea is to, to write down the titration reaction you know i've got silver one mole reacting with one mole of chloride to give me a salt a precipitate silver chloride okay and so i can determine uh, my mean um, titrant used and that is what it is that is 6.78 and I can determine the standard deviation of that you know which is that okay and so now I can calculate the number of moles you know of silver you know that was uh, used and the number of moles of silver used is calculated here and of course we all know the number of moles you just multiply it you know concentration you know times volume concentration you know times volume so the question is you know was the uncertainty considering this is a multiplication you know so it means that i'm gonna convert you know my errors here into relative 
before I put them in the error propagation equation. Okay, so I convert that, you know, 0 0.002 divided by the measured value, that's the relative. And then I do the same with the volume, you know, I get uh, the relative um, um, uh, uncertainty and then I put it in the error propagation equation and that's what I get as my as, as my final answer there. Now having got that, you know, I can um, Now remember, you know, I've got now my relative uncertainty, you know, for the millimoles of chloride, but I need um, the absolute so that I can have the units. How do I do that? You know, I'll take the measured value multiplied by the relative so that I can have, you know, the absolute uncertainty. And so my absolute uncertainty, you know, is shown there, you know, for the 25 mil of the aliquot of the chloride, you know, that I titrated. However, if you look at my question, my question is asking uh, the, the amount of uncertainty in the 250 mil of the original sample, you know, that I had. And I only titrated, you know, 25 mil. Okay, so the number of moles in the 250 mil you know, would be times 10, of 10 times more. So I would need to multiply these numbers, you know, by 10, you know, to get my original, I, my original um, co concentration, you know, in millimoles, you know, in the 250 mil, okay? This is what you call multiplying it, you know, by the concentration factor. The concentration factor refers to, you, you, you know, the, 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 the V, the, the, the V, um, the, the, the V final, you know, over the V initial, you know, and the V final, you know, would have been the 250 mil, you, you know, divide, you know, by the 25 mil, you know, which is sort of w what I use to titrate, and that's how I'm getting, you know, 10 mil to multiply it uh, right there. So th th that's how you do error propagation, and I hope you know it's fairly it's fairly clear. So based on what um, you know, I have talked about. You know, why don't you do this problem? You know, at home, it's very similar. You know, to the first one that I showed you, is an acid-based titration. You've got all the data provided, and so the question is, you know, calculate the percent acetic acid, you know, in the vinegar and then also include um, the relative, uh, include, you know, its uncertainty. You know, so try, try that at home. And then of course, you know, you, we can discuss after you try it at home.